I just got this book, Panopticon, by Steve McCaffrey. It's put out by Book Thug uh, in 2011. It's a reissue of a book from 1984. Um, and as McCaffrey tells us at the end in an afterword, it came out uh, several years before the, the texts that would establish the primary tenets of language poetry appeared. And so those things together became a rather wide-scale critique of representationality in poetic language, as well as in language in general. Uh, and this kind of forms the core of Panopticon, which is namely how to make a critique of representationality in writing when you have to use writing, or as McCaffrey puts it specifically, how do we inscribe the absence of a narrative by using a narrative? So there's a real experimental nature to this book. And if it's an experiment, what are the conditions of the experiment? First thing is that there's a real research element uh, to the project. Um, McCaffrey talks about the things he wanted to bring together. So for instance, Jeremy Bentham's Panoptic Papers of the 1790s, uh, along with Foucault's book, Discipline and Punish, uh, which appeared in the 1970s. Um, the first created and the second examined the notion of this central tower in a penal situation. Bentham was talking about literally having a, a tower in a prison uh, that would create the illusion that prisoners were being uh, watched 24 hours all the time. And Foucault extended that to think philosophically about how that's going on in society anyway without the need for a tower. Um, so the idea of surveillance is really symbolic and uh, Foucault would say that that symbolic surveillance causes the prisoner to internalize their surveillance. So this is uh, part of the material the material elements that McCaffrey is drawing on. He also talks about George Orwell's 1984, which you know has an allegorical uh, thing to say about this idea of surveillance in society. Uh, McCaffrey also talks about using some of uh, Piranesi's prison engravings and uh, different. Uh, drawings of that nature, um, which sort of are put in the book on uh, on graph paper. And uh, this, of course, relates to prisons, but also the kind of surveillance uh, nature of medical observation and the literal exposure of intestines, which, uh, I don't know if you noticed, the, the, those, uh, those graphic images are laid out against graph paper, which you know, brings together a kind of mathematical laying out uh, creation of a specific area of examination uh, that has measure and so on. So all of these things as research, uh, research materials and so on are coming together in a recombinative act that's compressing a lot of historical and conceptual and philosophical and artistic references. And doing this, you know, really highlights a modernist poetic practice, going beyond modernist, of course, but it's uh, got, uh, got a very strong relationship to modernist because, you know, Pound talked about the materials from which poems can be assembled, and in a way that denies the idea that poetry is somehow an essence that the poet taps into. Um, you know, there's the, an idea among many of the modernists that you are rearranging shreds and shards of things. And for Pound, literally, you're arranging the shreds and shards of a botched civilization to uh, spin a phrase from him. So I think in doing this, McCaffrey is not at all referring to some romantic concepts of poetry or anything, but he's literally breaking things apart and forcing them to collaborate or throwing them into a space and letting them, permitting them to interact. Um, and what, why I'm even talking about this book at all is because I think that what's going on in Panopticon is he, these things are being brought together in what is a, a primarily a cinematic space or uh, something that operates in terms of cinema, uh, even though it's something that is created within the graphical and material constraints of a prose book. Um, but some, somehow lurking in here, the primary research material, I think, is the fact of film itself, the concept of film. So um, one thing that's very interesting in that regard, even though we're thinking about film, is that Panopticon really evades having a plot, um, but that still allows it to connect with cinema. So let me try and explain that. 
the plot as such uh, the book repeatedly tells us about either a woman or a man who's taking a bath in order to get ready to go and see a film and apparently this film is based on a book and there seems to be another film with the identical title of the book it, to be truth, it, pr truthful it gets all rather confusing and partly the reason it's confusing is because the notion of the title of the movie and the title of the book have sort of specific signifiers, but they get messed up in the refusal to have proper names for people. So the mark is what the book and the movie are called, and there's a movie referred to called Panopticon. But when it comes to these people who exist in this space, it's always he, she, it, we, you, but never referring to the name of an actual person. And to my mind, this brings uh, the, it brings to my mind the absolute fasc fascination we have with um, knowing the names of the actors we're watching when we go to the cinema, uh, and the, and the title of the movie, for instance. We're never really, really watching just a character in a movie. We're always watching the captured movement and speech patterns of an individual who exceeds the fact of their representation on the screen. Um, they are always more than who they are playing, so they come with an entire story, a kind of uh, mythology outside of the mythology, as it were. So part of what McCaffrey's doing is highlighting this sort of inevitable characteristic of the cinema by radically restricting it, um, giving certain things names and other things not. And I think what this also brings to my mind is something that John Truby talks about, which is namely that character and plot even in the most conventional film, are really the same thing. So, or, or narrative, really, uh, like Oedipus. The difference between character and plot, supposedly, uh, theoretically, should be the same thing. Um, and movies that, uh, or narratives that make plot and character different, they really endanger their success because um, we are interested in that deep connection between character and plot as being almost uh, the same. So. Um, we get a fuller narrative experience when those things are brought together. And I think what McCaffrey is doing here is giving us a fuller non-narrative experience by ensuring that plot and character are essentially parsed out as the same thing, uh, but he's going at it by a different uh, avenue. Um, another way that the book relates to cinema is the fact that there are no page numbers. Um, although there is you know, traditional textual matter laid out on pages, which actually are referred to as plates throughout the book, the book takes on more like a scroll quality or you know a roll of film you can scan through it without having to be under the hierarchical thumb of progressive numerality you know the notion that page one comes after page two and so on is literally destroyed it's not that you're ever obliged to read a book in a linear fashion anyway no book forces you to do that but uh, we're invited to do so because of standard conventions, social training, and so on. We just know that books go from top to the front to the back and, and so forth. But in, in Panopticon, you're not even invited to think of it that way because there's no page numbers, and you're, in fact, prevented from thinking of it that way. Uh, to a certain extent, the book designers, Book Thug, have participated in this plot against the reader because they've got you know the colophon page at the end rather than the beginning although that's something they do with a lot of their books as part of their larger modus operandi. But on the matter of pages and page numbers, we should really point out that the book graphically refers to film uh, in other ways, which uh, involves having um, sort of film strip areas, uh, like so, proceeding across the page. And the textual matter inside those film strip areas resembles what you might find in a screenplay little instructions and directions about how things are supposed to be uh, there's also very interestingly a number of pages where uh, page other pages have been sort of glued in there or sutured in you might say um, and I think that also is kind of cinematic because in terms of the reality of film which is you know something that's receptive to being cut apart and cut into uh, in a way that really allows this insertion of other material after the fact of shooting, right? After the fact of creation, you can put this stuff in. So I think in producing the book this way, what McCaffrey is doing is sort of stepping away from the text as an author who dictates how a book should be approached. He's not like some kind of Stephen King who's going to enforce the convention, which says, you know, the story begins on page one and it ends on the final page. Um, 
instead what McCaffrey is doing is really inviting us to become the film director uh, or perhaps more correctly the editor we pick and choose flip through the pages and assemble them in our own way make our own cuts uh, and our own edits our own rising and falling action our own dilemmas uh, our own sort of uh, solutions to the problems and so on and we combine them as we will knowing that you know each slice has meaning that uh, that we get to engage in. So there's a sense really that the reader is being is being allowed to be the equal of the writer in terms of creating the outcome of the text uh, without uh, some recourse to a master convention of how narrative works in the popular sense. So check it out, Panopticon by Steve McCaffrey.